As a northerner, cold weather and me kind of get along. But for many others, including our railway network, the big chill can come with big problems. Just like in hot weather, cold weather can affect the network. Ice settling on the tracks can cause the engines to lose adhesion and slip, and ice deposits can slip in between rail points, preventing them from working. Overhead, the combined weight of ice accumulating on power lines can bring them down, and snow can cause more damage and obscure the tracks. In the northern parts of the UK, the snow can be so bad it can cause drifts and block cuttings, blocking the tracks completely. Of all the hazards the railway has to contend with, snow is one of the worst. The railways that cross the Pennines and Scotland are the most vulnerable and have to take extra measures to avoid more trouble. But back in the day, it was the North Eastern Railway that had to contend with the brunt of it. The North Eastern decided to tackle this challenge head on and produced several purpose built snow ploughs using the chassis and the tenders from old scrapped, or soon to be scrapped, steam engines. The snow ploughs were designed by Mr. Wilson Wordsell and were made from a mix of solid oak and metal stays. Inspired by how boats move through water, the plough was designed to cut through the snow rather than push against it. The bow-like front is flanked by two large ramps that are designed to scoop up the snow from the tracks and the shape of the bowed front would deflect the snow and channel it to the trackside. While the plough weighed in at a hefty 27 tonnes, scrap metal and wood would be added into the frame, giving it extra weight. At the snow plough's rear, you will find a door. This door leads to a small mess area for the men to relax and travel in as the engine did the work and a brake was also included here as well. If the snow clearance was too much for the engine, then the men armed with spades would go out and clear the snow by hand. To keep the men warm, a small stove was included. To keep the wheels from clogging up with snow, the snowplow's design included skirts over the wheels and to ensure the blade had a smooth surface, countersunk rivets were used. The buffers at the back were also specially designed to be made of solid oak with an iron strike head which allowed for the engine, or engines, to push with greater force. The snow ploughs normally would work in tandem and with two engines. The twin engines would be coupled back to back with the snow ploughs in situated in front of them. This way the crews did not need to worry about additional shunting of the ploughs or trying to turn them around. If the plough was travelling on the network, it still needed a head coat and a tail lamp, so foldable lamp irons were added which could be folded flat when the plough was in use and ensures it does not impede the plough's blades. Snow ploughs, although rebuilt and improved, have retained this basic format for decades but have been modified to be more efficient. In 2019, the National Railway Museum got an unexpected phone call from Network Rail asking for copies of engineering drawings from Sir Nigel Gresley himself. The museum was further confused when Network Rail advised the plans were needed to help maintain some of its snow ploughs. Curious, the museum asked Network Rail to elaborate on why the plans were needed and they were astounded by the answer. The plans themselves were mundane by enthusiast standard and showed the technical designs on leaf springs, which were a part of tenders belonging to a range of locomotives from the LNER. These tenders would have been attached to the V2 classes, the B1 class and the K3s and the K4s. The 1960s Cullon steam locomotives had created a glut of spare tender frames. Fresh on the back of the worst winter in UK's history, British Rail had decided to use these tenders to produce a series of independent snow ploughs. It was a cost-cutting move and it worked well.
When Network Rail inherited these snow ploughs, they saw no need to scrap them, but wanted to overhaul them ready for the 2020 winter season. Because the modern day snow ploughs still run on essentially design created by the big man himself, the plans were required to see how the springs came apart and more importantly, how they went back together again. I mean, if it's not broken, why fix it? It must have been a humbling thought to the museum that a part of Sir Nigel Gresley's designs is still a part of the modern mainline work over 100 years later. Instead of using steam locomotives, the power behind these ploughs is a fleet of Class 37s and they are still used in exactly the same way as the North Eastern Railway would have done. Two 37s back to back, each with its own snow plough at its nose. The diesels also operate steam jets and blowers to help move the snow away. More modern techniques, such as the use of drones and thermal imaging, can help detect problem areas, and detailed monitoring of wedding patterns can help determine the best place for the ploughs to be situated, ready to be used. If the snow isn't too deep, 20 centimetres or so, then the trains can use their own independent ploughs and ghost trains can be run along the lines to help them melt the snow and keep the tracks clear. In areas where a third rail is needed, to prevent this from icing over, Network Rail use snow and ice treatment trains which clears the ice and coats the electrified rail in a special antifreeze. Finally, you have the masters of the snow clearing world, the snowblowers. These are located in Scotland, where the weather can be particularly bad. The snowblowers use propellers which can cut through the most compacted of drifts and blow the snow to the sides. It's the most unique engine I've ever seen as it has its own turntable within it. It can spin 180 degrees on its own chassis, so turning it around is a breeze. Dealing it with snow is a big challenge today as it's always been, if not more so as more and more people rely on the railways and the roads to travel. If you get a chance, the NER snowplough is proudly on display at Shilston at Locomotion and I last saw the modern day snowploughs in York in a siding. If you want to see the raw power of these things at work, have a look on YouTube. There are loads of videos showing the 37s at work with the ploughs in tow. In truth though, I am kind of jealous because there's no way you can see that video and you can't tell me that is not fun. <laughs>